Hello and welcome. This is another video showing how to recreate famous gardens in Garden Planner. And today the garden I'm recreating is Hampton Court Maze in East Moseley in London, UK. Now, Hampton Court Maze is a hedge maze. Um, it's actually over 300 years old, so it's one of the oldest hedge mazes in the world, certainly probably the oldest in the United Kingdom. And it's quite a famous maze. It's not something you typically have in your normal back garden, but I thought it was an interesting project to consider. So here we go. Here's a satellite view of the maze um, from Google Satellite. Now I'm not going to use this because it's not as clear as another image I've got of a maze um, that I'll use as a guide. But the nice thing about Google, Google Satellite is that I can measure the distance. So I just want to get a sense of how big this is. And if I measure it, I can see it's about 70 meters or 230 feet for the kind of back wall of the maze. So quite substantial. This is definitely a big landscaping plan. And it gives me a sense of what sort of size I'm working out here. And you can see there's the maze and a few trees and stuff around there. Okay, let's go into Garden Planner and I'll type in that in for my new garden. Um, and I'll call it maze. If that isn't one I've used before, let's have a look. Oh, okay, well, Garden Planner is warning me there that I have used that name before. So we'll come up with a slightly better one, like Hampton Court Maze, which is more descriptive anyway. And we'll start with that. Now, as I said, it was a big garden. So I think the first thing I'll do is go into Settings and change the base scale that Garden Planner is using to something appropriate for a landscaping project. This is not your normal backyard. This is a big park. And next I'm going to import an image. This is an image I got, I think, from the Hampton Court website of the maze. And I can scale the image there, and I know it's slightly bigger than the maze itself, the image, so I scaled it, um, working on the assumption that it's uh, 90 metres is the width of the image. That's what the image is representing. And I can just kind of check if I've got the right scale here just by drawing out a fence and I can see yeah that's about 70 meters which is about what I thought it was. I don't have to go for perfect accuracy today because I'm not actually going to be building this maze. Um, it's not a plan to draw from it's just to get it you know reasonably accurate. Okay so what do we want to do? Well let's start with a hedge. That's the whole core of the maze. So I've chosen a hedge style in the wall and fences tool and now I'll just draw that out. Um, I'll start down here at what I think is the exit of the maze. Actually, I've never been to this maze, um, so my walk around in 3D at the end of this will be my first chance to walk around the maze. Um, hopefully it'll be a little bit like actually being there in London, only I'm in Australia and it's quite a bit warmer here. Okay, so there we go. That's one of the outer perimeters of the maze almost drawn up. Just, I'll just do my usual click. Drag, click, drag to add little points and a double click at the end there. And there we are. And I can adjust any bits that make that a little bit curved. I'll move the properties window because it's obscuring things there. And just drag the green circle to curve, drag this green circle to curve, making it all um, more accurate or, you know, more representative. Um, I could make it a bit thicker, the hedge, but I'm not going to because it's a very narrow maze and... Um, I think I'll make a, my version of it a little bit wider, a little bit easier to walk around in on a computer screen. Okay, so there's the interior one. Um, it will be boring for you to watch me do all the rest of them, so we're just going to magically zoom into the future where, wait for it, and there we go, I've done them all. Um, and that's all the maze drawn out. So, you know, that's half of the design done. But there's still some other elements to this maze. Um, obviously there's trees and there's a little building there. That's the ticket booth. So let's find buildings and put that in. Um, it looks like a kind of slate grey roof building, a little bit bigger than the default size there, so we'll make it um, larger. I'm working in metres here, but of course Garden Planner can work in feet and inches just as easily. Just choose what you prefer. Um, and I'll just rotate that round so it's rotated like it is in the picture. That seems about right. And we'll also um, just position it right, maybe make it 
uh, a little bit shorter. I think the length is perhaps just, yeah, there we go. That looks close enough. Um, and I happen to know, because I found a photo of a ticket booth on the internet, that it's um, blue. Uh, let me see if I can just bring up that photo for you. This is the maze. If we go back to photos on Google and scroll down, eventually I... Oh, we just got there. There we go. There's the entrance to the maze. Um, there's a little blue ticket booth with a window, a slate fence and some other fences around there. So I'll just pick a blue and... Oops, I made the roof, not the... That would make for walls blue, not for... Okay, so we've added in our blue ticket booth. Um, if we look at that, you can see at the entrance, there's also like a kind of tall picket fence on the entrance and small picket fences right at the little entrance gate. So I'll just take a default timber fence here and draw that out um, along that hedge, which I also haven't drawn in yet. I'll do that next. So we'll just draw out that fence and that will be our blue um, entranceway fence and the two little fences right where you go in. Uh, these are tiny, I probably should have zoomed in. Yeah, let's zoom in. That makes life a little bit easier. And here we go. And we'll just draw in. Uh, actually, I might just adjust that hedge slightly. Mm, or maybe not. I've got um, Snap to Grid on here and I think it makes it easier, but sometimes it's worth turning off. You can just turn that off in settings. Um, grid settings, under the settings menu. Um, okay, and so we're just drawing that little entranceway fence, and it's blue, so let's make it blue. And make this one blue, because I forgot to do that. And I don't think I made the original one, but I drew in blue, so we'll just... Uh, that's the image, there we go, the fence. Um, and there we go. All right, that's all uh, looking reasonable. What else do we have in, oh, I'll just adjust this so it goes right up to the edge of the building. Uh, actually, there's um, this hedge here that around the entranceway building. It's not part of the maze. It's just there for decoration, I guess. Um, so I'll put that in as well, uh, as it forms part of the boundary of the maze. So you end on one side, you wander your way through. The aim of the maze is to get to the centre, and then you come out the exit on the other side. And what else do I need here? Oh yeah, there's a tiny little fence there at the exit, so we might as well put that in. Um, as I said before, I've never been to this maze, so I'm taking my guess from satellite views and Google images of whether it's accurate. If someone's actually been to this, feel free to email me and tell me what I got wrong or what I got right. Um, at the very least, the maze is a correct representation of the maze, so wandering around it should be um, reasonably similar. I'm just going to make that hedge a little bit thicker there. Um, that'll do for now and just adjust that fence so it's closer. Um, when I go into 3D view I can get those all looking perfect as you can do minor nudge adjustments. But there we go, that's our entrance with the fences like it appears in that photo. Um, oh, there's gates there. I, right at the very entrance there seem to be a couple open blue picket fence style gates. So I'll just add those in, just drag in a gate. It'll be a little bit small, I think, because that's quite a big entranceway, so I'll make it a bit bigger. Helps if I zoom in again, because um, this is a very big plan, and so things like gates uh, look quite small. Let's you zoom in, so make it nice and blue, and make it um, about one and a half metres um, in size. And that'll do, position it roughly right. And there's the other one that's actually facing the wrong way round. If you can see there, it might be difficult on the video to see clearly. It's fine on my screen. I guess it depends on what resolution you're working at. Uh, so I'll make that one point, type it in correctly, please. 1.5 and 1.5, or whatever that is in feet. I can't think of offhand. 
um, and make it blue. And there we go, that's our entranceway gates, which actually, uh, I guess are probably open. You, I imagine you walk up to the ticket booth, get your ticket, and wander through, and get lost, and bump into tourists, and come back out again. Now I'll just adjust that hedge, that's a little bit closer to where I've positioned the gate. Um, I could make all this much wider. Um, you can change, choose settings and change the thickness of walls or hedges. Um, if you so desire, I'm not going to bother today because I don't want this video to go forever. Okay, what else do we need to do? Okay, we've clearly got um, a lawn, some trees, and I'm guessing that it's kind of gravel underneath the pathway and what you walk around on um, when you're navigating the maze. So let's put a bit of gravel here. As always with Garden Planner and the drawing tools, it's just click, 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 etc., etc., until you've drawn out the shape you want, and then double click at the end. Um, if you're doing something that's uh, paving or lawn or something like that, you don't actually have to go right to the final point because it'll connect it up. Um, and there we go, there's our maze. And I probably could adjust a few bits of that. It looks It doesn't look too bad, but there's a couple of spots where it looks a bit narrow or wonky. Um, and then I'll just draw out those lawns. I'm not doing the whole thing. The whole gardens is massive. Um, it has a section of gardens next to the maze called the Wilderness. So I'm guessing that's pretty huge. And it's mostly just grass and trees and flowers, uh, which isn't complex to do, but I'm not going to bother today. Okay, that's looking all right. I'm going to switch to layers and actually hide what I've just drawn because I can no longer see my photo and thus can't see the trees underneath and I would like to put those trees in. Now this is a large English estate, so I'm not exactly sure what kind of trees, but I would guess oak and birch and beech, things like that maybe. Um, Clearly quite large. I'll stick. I'm not going for perfect accuracy here. Again, I don't have. I couldn't even find any photos online of the little entranceway trees. So I'm just taking a guess um, of what I would expect in this kind of garden. So I'll put a large oak tree there, and I'll put a couple of beech trees here. Make them a little bit bigger and taller. I mean, a good tip with Garden Planet, if you change the size in the 2D view, for it to look good in the 3D view, you should also consider changing the height as well. So if you make a um, 8 meter by 8 meter wide tree, um, but it's only, the, it was originally 2 meters high and it remains 2 meters high, it's going to look a bit kind of squashed when you see it in 3D. So, you know. Bear that in mind, but you can always change the height in the 3D view. If you look in and go, oh, it looks like my oak tree has been sat on, um, you can uh, change the value just right there in the 3D view and it'll to a more meaningful height. And the width and height of trees is generally um, interrelated. So um, a tree with a spread, a width of 10 meters will probably be at least 10 meters high. It's not always the case, but it's often the case. Okay, um, that's good enough. I've stuck a few trees there. They're not perfect, um, but I'm just quickly throwing them in. Let's have an elm tree that's 10 metres wide and 12 metres high. And there I'm doing reasonably well. I've done a little bit of save because it's good. Um, Gunplan does auto-save every 10 minutes if you're using the My Plans option. If you're saving to a location your computer, you need to um, fuse it to save yourself. Okay, um, let's see. In the center, this is the center of the maze. This is obviously in winter where it does not look very green, but you can see there's a trellis there right on that center bit. That's the section of the maze you're trying to get to, to you know, say you've completed the maze. And um, so I'll just draw in a wall that I can later turn into a trellis. Um, along, oops, click the wrong thing there. And I'll um, draw in the trellis and reposition it slightly. Move that properties window out of the way. And next, I'll 
So I'm just draw choosing the, a wooden fence, which will just be a solid brown timber fence. Um, but if I go into 3D view, I can change what it actually looks like in 3D view and make it um, into a trellis style, which will look about right for what's at the centre of the maze. Uh, this final plan will be available on the website uh, where URL will be um, smallblueprinter.com slash garden slash maze.html. Um, okay, I'll go back to my layers. I'll just zoom to 100 and put the layers back on so I can see that ground again. There we go. Actually, it looks a little bit off the top, I think. I'll just move those trees so they're on to the design area I've created. And yeah, just adjust that corner because it's not straight and that's annoying me. Okay, great. And now I reckon we're at a point where we can actually have a look at this in 3D and see what it's like and maybe fix up any issues that we notice in 3D. Because there will always be. There'll be things that are not quite the height you expected or whatever. Okay, so look, there's the maze. Um, you can see there. Again, I could smooth and adjust some of those corners. This has been done very quickly. And there are those trees we added in looking quite nice and attractive. And let's just fly along um, and zoom down to what would be the actual entrance and get that looking quite right. So what we need to do here is adjust um, that. I positioned it in 2D, but it's a very large scale. I'll change the style of that and change the position of that fence. So it looks... So let's change it to a kind of picket style, which is what we saw in the photo of the entrance. I haven't quite got the right shade of blue there, but um, it'll do for now. I'm used, I'll just move the camera so I can see where I am. I'm using the, um, that little navigator thing, so selected object position, um, which is called the, the nudge buttons, basically. Oops, nudge it too far. And it just really helps in 3D to get something positioned exactly right. Because especially if you're working on a really large scale plan, it can be hard to get the positioning right on 2D um, unless you really zoom in. But this just makes it so much easier because you can exactly see what you're doing. Okay, and there's our fence and there's our fence there. Um, that probably needs to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to make it um, just not quite a metre, but a bit under a metre. Yeah, that'll do. And there's the entrance. You go in. That gate could probably do a bit of adjusting as well. Um, in its position. But I think I'll just leave it for now. We'll go in and we'll go up to the entrance. That's the ticket booth where you would buy your tickets. And I'll just put make that into a little picket style fence, which is what we saw in the photo before. And there we go, we're at the entrance to the ticket booth to go in. Um, as I think the ticket booth had a window at least, um, probably has a door, but um, the window is the important bit, that's where you would buy the ticket. It makes it look a bit odd without that. So let's just quickly add a window in. Um, and I'll just rotate what's the rotation on that building and I'll rotate the window to be the same. And I'll also need to make it that nice blue colour. Otherwise, it would, I think the default window colour is white. Uh, but we'll make it blue and we'll just position it there. Go into 3D and adjust if it needs it. Yeah, that's not quite what we want. We want it a bit taller. Um, yeah, that looks more plausible and um, just position it uh, a bit more appropriately so it looks like a, the right sort of position you would expect. Okay, there's your ticket booth. You can come in and get your um, ticket from before we go to navigate the maze. Um, I'll just add a little seal there because it's likely to have that for a ticket booth. And in we go. Uh, okay, let's enter the maze and see if we can find our way through to the centre 
um, where do I want to go? In this way, turn around, and ah, actually, I've forgotten something. I noticed on the it's actually a gap there on the photo, but when I looked online, there's a little fence um, or wall there blocking, so you're forced to turn left at the start of a maze, otherwise, you'd end up going straight to the exit. My guess is that there was once a hedge there and they've changed it to this maybe to help people get lost or maybe the hedge died, I'm not sure. Um, but let's go and that makes it um, more accurate. Okay, so you can't go that way because that's the shortcut to the exit. Okay, so thank you for your... T oh, just let's adjust that window because it's annoying me if it's sticking out too far. There we go, that looks far more appropriate. Okay, now... Um, we're going to walk down a maze. Oh, I could change the texture of a hedge if I preferred. Uh, maybe that looks more realistic. Um, but I'd have to go through and change it for the different walls. I won't do that now. I may do that in the version I put online because I think I'd prefer that hedge texture slightly more. Okay, so we're wandering around. Imagine we're walking down the maze, um, avoiding tourists, people taking photos. or Actually, there's very few photos and videos online from within this maze, so I'm not sure what tourists do, maybe they just get lost. Okay, and so far there's been no option, so we just wander down a maze, seeing what we can find. The frame rate's a bit choppy here, but it's just because I've made the video slow. If you've got a reasonable computer, it should be quite smooth. Um, now I can go left or right. Which way should I go? I'll go left. I'll wander around. Where am I? Can I see any points of interest? No, just the sky. Oh, there are those trees. Which trees are? Oh, dead end. Okay. So I haven't found my way out yet. Let's turn around and try going this way. Is there anything down this way? Yes. Keep going. I think those are the trees near the entrance. Oh, you said the tops of the trees are a little bit of a clue. My guess is if you go to the actual maze in London, that might be a useful reference point. And then we've got more corners to turn. Go down that way or go this way. I think I can see the roof of the ticket booth there, so that gives me some kind of orientation. Can I go down this way? Is there more of a path there? Yes, there is. Wander down there. Oops, walked into the wall. Um, and keep going and going, and I'm starting to get lost, equally lost and a little bit tired of this. So let's go up and have a look. And there's our maze. It's worked out reasonably well. The only issue is that trellis in the middle, which I didn't finished doing so let's go and just touch up that um, so I'll just zoom into the middle and select the fence and um, just flick through all the different styles to a trellis and then use the buttons to nudge it into the exact spot I want it and that looks not unlike the center of the maze well not like the picture we saw where hedge will look dead but um, hopefully what it looks like at the moment um, and I can do the same thing for there and with uh, as I cycle through the different styles uh, that's not the one there we go um, you can see the hedge um, and I can obviously reposition it slightly too uh, you can get a little disoriented move around and treat which arrow moves things which way but there you go that's the center of a maze yay we did it we made it to the center of Hampton Court maze um, like people have been doing for 300 years, only we did it on a computer using Garden Planner. Okay, so um, this plan will be available on the website. There will be a link under this video so you can download it. Um, hopefully videos have been of some interest or use to you um, and uh, I'll do some more in the future. Thank you.